Hey, GED students. May was asking some questions about one of my percent worksheets in this Facebook group that I belong to. It's called GED We Study and Help Each Other. By the way, if you don't belong to it, oh, join it. It is such a great place of support and resources, free resources for GED students. She was looking at this problem involving tables and multi-step percent problems. Pretty tricky. You are going to want your GED calculator in order to tackle this. So name of the worksheet was finding a percent GED style and she had some problems with the table on the second page. Um, got a little bit of a tricky table going on here and it's 12, 13, and 14 she wants to look at. So First of all, let's just go ahead and read this passage. It says, Red River Youth Theater offers three popular summer programs which fill up quickly every year. The table to the right shows the costs for participating. Okay, I'm not super excited about this passage. It didn't give me a ton of information. However, I do see uh, that this table over here on the right is gonna show me how much it's gonna cost if I wanna participate or have my student participate. And I can see this lovely table over here has some great information on it. Now, I can't stress enough. This is a different skill, not a percent skill. This is interpreting visuals, but read, 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 read the labels on a graph. You guys often don't, and you miss a lot because of that. I'm just going to look at this. I can see that we have some summer programs. Underneath summer programs, I see three things. There's three types of summer programs, right? We have a drama class, a theater intensive, a theater camp, and then down the left, side here, we can see we have some different fees. There's weekly fees, but then there's the number of weeks that a program lasts. There's the number of students allowed in and then this costume fee. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the problems that May was struggling with. Number 12, assuming that each program is booked to full capacity. Oh, that's an interesting phrase, booked to full capacity. What am I saying there? So interesting. A lot of times students don't think that reading is going to come into play on the math test. Oh, it is. So it's booked to full capacity. Uh, every single seat is taken. We have the maximum number of students. How much will the Red River Youth Theater gross in weekly fees from its summer youth programs? There we go again, gross. Gross is a total income. It's everything you make before you pay out any expenses. So they're asking us for a total if every student attends and which programs, because we had multiple programs. Well, look again at that wording there. It says, how much will it gross from its summer youth programs? S, all of them. So full capacity, all the students are coming. Total, the total money we're going to get from all the programs. Woo, we've got some work to do. And by the way, you want your GED calculator for this. Let's start with just the drama class. Notice, we want the gross in weekly fees, weekly fees. Now, when we went down the left-hand side of that, table, there was more than just weekly fees involved, right? And so I would just totally cross off this other kind of fees, costume fees. It's not going to apply if we're just looking at weekly fees. We're looking at this, but we are wanting to find out the weekly fees for all the summer programs for all the students for all the weeks. And so we need the rest of this information. All right. Because what's going to happen is each one of the 75 students is gonna pay $15 in a weekly fee, so that means once a week, for how many weeks? 10 weeks. And that's just the drama class. So that means they're gonna pay $15 10 times, right? If they attend for 10 weeks and the weekly fee is $15, they're gonna pay that 10 times. Notice I multiplied, why? Well, literally, we call that a time sign because that is for when we have something repeating over and over again. And we see that $15 repeating. How many times is it going to repeat? It's going to repeat 10 times, but it's also going to repeat another 75 times. This charge here is going to happen 75 times. Why? Because each one of the 75 students pay that same amount. And so again, we see that idea of repetition. So 15 times 10 times 75, pick up your GED calculator. We have a lot 
to do here. We are doing some serious mathematical reasoning. Our brain space right now is dedicated to that word problem reasoning and all those other higher level skills we're doing. It'd be really easy to make a stupid mistake. Okay. I've seen students who are focusing so well. Tell me one plus one is four. Let's let the calculator handle what the calculator can handle. 15 times 10 times 75. And I get, woo. A lot of money from that alone, 11,000, holy moly, $250 just from that piece. But that's just from the drama class. We said that we were going to find the gross in weekly fees for all the summer youth programs. It didn't specify. It has an S. We're going to assume all of them. Okay, so now let's go look at the theater intensive. Now, the theater intensive is more expensive. It's $240, but it's not for as many weeks. So, you know, it's only six weeks. So that $240 is going to get paid six times. And again, not as many students. Only 40 students can participate in that. So this total fee here is going to happen 40 times. So let's go ahead and figure out the total weekly fees for the theater intensive. So $240, six times for those six weeks, 40 times for those all 40 of those students. We said it was booked to full capacity. Woo, they're making some money over there in the summer program. That's $57,600. And now let's move on to theater camp. Theater camp is $750 but it's only two weeks and only 30 students get to attend. So that $750 is gonna get paid two times, times two by each one of the 30 students. So times 30, and it looks like $45,000 the theater is gonna make here. Now we've got this money from the drama class. We've got this money from the theater intensive. We've got this money, this gross from the theater camp. If I want to put all the summer youth programs together, um, just lumping three sums together, I'm just going to go ahead and add them. I am afraid of typing in wrong numbers in my calculator, especially when I get nervous. So one of the nice things you can do is arrow up, you know, there's a little arrow key on your calculator, arrow up to the answer from before, press enter and it'll appear on your screen. And then you can press plus arrow up to the 57,000 and enter that. And then again, plus arrow up to the 45,000 and enter that. So the work that I'm basically doing is adding these three numbers I got, this one, this one and this one in my calculator. And I press enter and holy moly, we get $113,850 gross total. If we're at full capacity, every student that can attend does attend for all our summer programs. Hmm, tricky. You can see why May was like, holy moly, what am I supposed to do here? <laughs> So interesting, you might say, Kate, why the heck was this problem on a percent worksheet? Didn't you tell me this was a percent worksheet? We didn't do percents at all. We found totals. Well, there's a reason for that. We're going to build here and percents are out of totals. In order to determine a percent, you have to be able to find a total. And remember, we said gross means total. And so this skill is going to get built on. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next example. So number 13, assuming that each program is booked to full capacity, there we go again, all the students are going to attend, what percentage to the nearest 10th, okay, so we've been asked to find what percentage to the nearest 10th of the weekly fees collected, of the weekly fees collected over the summer come from the drama class? Boom, there's why I asked you to find the total before. Notice that I say, what percentage of the weekly fees? Those weekly fees were the total we just found. So I'm saying to you, what percent of those weekly fees? Now we know how much those weekly fees were, 113,000. 850. And guys, expect multi-step percent problems on the GED. That's in their list of things you have to be able to do. They don't just say percent problems. They specify multi-step percent problems. No joke. So what percent of 113,850, those for the weekly fees collected over the summer come from the drama class? So what percent of this number is from drama? Well, we found that as well, too. Remember, when we looked at just the drama class, we said that that was, ooh, let me arrow up in my calculator to find that number since I erased it from my screen. That was 11,250. 
watch what I do here. There's a lot of different ways to find percents. Okay. There's like at least um, four ways I can think of that are super duper popular. But what I like to use is this phrase out of out of, because I know that out of, whether it's in percents or it's in probability can be expressed as a fraction bar. So listen to this phrase I'm gonna say, $11,250 out of, out of the total. Uh, and the total is $113,850. Literally, we are looking here at the ratio, um, $11,250 out of $113,850 means uh, divided by, I mean, out of literally means divided by or a fraction bar in math. So this is my favorite way to do it because, and only because if you're taking the GED, <laughs> it does percent calculations for you. If the GED is not the test you're taking, you might prefer another route for this problem. Like I said, four different ways and there's teachers out there teaching all of them on the internet. Um, but anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type this into my calculator as a fraction, and then I'm gonna use the convert button to convert it to a percent. There are three ways to talk about pieces and parts of numbers, uh, three common ways anyway, fractions, percents, and decimals. And you can convert back and forth either by hand or in your GED calculator. What, what? That's my favorite way. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in as a fraction first. How I'll do that is I'll hit the N over D button. That's for fractions. I'll type 11,250 on the top. I'll type 113,850 on the bottom. And then I'm, I'm gonna press the right arrow, big gray button up at the top right has a little right arrow to get out of the fraction. I wanna be out of it before I do the convert to percent button. Now convert to percent looks like this. It's a little arrow. That means convert in your TI. That's not a math symbol. That's it's just how the TI calculator says convert. And then it has a little percent there. So I'm looking for convert to a percent. And you're going to notice that where it is, is it's in green above the, if you want anything in green, you have to hit the green second button. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to hit second and then that close parentheses button. And it should pop up on your screen looking like that arrow to a percent. I press enter and I skip this answer. 9.88 yada, yada, yada. And look at that answer at the end says percent. They converted it into a percent for you. Hallelujah. All you have to do is look to see if you have any rounding directions. This was a gross number. They may have asked us to round it. Let's go back and look. Assuming that each program is booked to full capacity, what percentage? Oh, there's some rounding language to the nearest tenth. Tenth is one place after the decimal. Cutting it off right there. My next number is big enough to matter. That's closer to 9.9% than it is to 9.8%. What percent of their total income comes from drama fees? 9.9%. <laughs> You're like, May, I see why you were struggling, May. Percents are tricky. <laughs> yeah, percents are tricky. And they do take a while to learn, by the way. So a lot of times, since there's usually only just one on the math section, I don't stress it too much if you really struggle with percents. I really don't. Uh, but the nice thing is they also show up on science and occasionally social studies. So you are studying for three tests at once. So take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> Let's clear this and look at the last one that May needed some help with. 14. After collecting costume fees from every student. Okay, now we're talking costume fees, guys. We've been ignoring this costume fee line for a while, but time to pay attention. Miss Limon, the costume director, spent $1,212 on costumes for the summer performance of Aladdin. To the nearest percent, Okay, they're asking us to find a percent. To the nearest percent, what percentage? Now look at that language again of the costume fees, of the costume fees, this is the total we're looking at, went to the Aladdin show, went to the Aladdin show. There's the piece we're asking about. And we wanna know what percent this piece is of the total costume fees this time. So we know the piece that went to the Aladdin show. Uh, it's right there in the problem. It says that Miss Limon spent $1,212 on costumes for the summer performance. So um, we're basically saying what percent of the total costume fees went to Aladdin. And again, I'm going to use that out of language. 
So how much went to Aladdin? 1,212 went to Aladdin, but that's out of the total costume fees. And once again, they're talking about a number we don't have. Now, last time I gave you a whole problem, 12, to go figure out the total, but this time I did it more like the GED will and just put the two steps together. <sighs> Tricky, but let's go get the total costume fees. Okie dokie. Now, the nice thing about costume fees is they're not weekly, like the weekly fees, you're not going to pay it multiple times. But a lot of students would just total these two numbers, $30 and $90, because that's not going to give Miss Limon much to work with. $120 in costume fees. Remember that each student will pay this, okay? Each student is going to pay the costume fees. So we're not going to just collect $30 one time, we're going to collect it 40 times. So $30 collected from each one of the students 40 times. And this idea of repeated fees, like weekly, monthly, yearly, versus one-time fees comes up a lot on the GED. So really make sure you're clear with that. But this is a one-time fee, but it's collected from many students. So that $30 will be collected once uh, from each of the 40 students. And then same thing with that $90 in costume fees, that's gonna be collected from those theater camp students, all 30 of them. So what are we gonna get, 2700? Now, what is my total of those costume fees? Well, both the theater intensive and the theater camp have them. And so I have this much and that much, I'll add those two together. And if you're thinking, why did she ignore drama cl class? Uh, here's why. And A, there's no costume fees for the drama class. So it's not me ignoring it, it's the summer programs. <laughs> so 1200 plus 2700. Okay, $3,900. So $1,212 out of the total $3,900 of costume fees is for Aladdin. And now I can do that same lovely trick that I did before, which is just put the fraction in my calculator and let it deal with the division and the converting to percent. Hey, okay. so that's the same as 1,212. So again, I'll hit the N over D button, 1,212 on top, arrow down for the bottom out of... 3,900, your calculator will do the division for you. That's implied by that fraction bar. And you need the convert to percent. Again, to get convert to percent, you're gonna press second and then the close parentheses button because right above that, it says convert to percent. Careful not to do the open parentheses button. That's not convert to percent. That's to use a number that's already a percent. And I get this 31 point yada, 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 dot, 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 percent. And once again, I got a gross number. And when you get a gross number, often in a word problem, you're going to be asked to round. Either you'll be explicitly asked to round, they'll tell you exactly what to round to, or you'll have multiple choice answers that are rounded. So you'll know, oh, hey, I better round. So let's go look for rounding directions. Looking at my underlined phrase there, it says to the nearest percent see that kind of rounding language to the nearest. Now, interesting, it doesn't have a place value there. It doesn't say to the nearest 10th or 100th or 1,000th of a percent. It just says to the nearest percent. Uh, when it does that, it just has a unit without stating a place. It is generally talking about a whole number. And so I'm gonna cut it off right at the decimal place. Consider the next number, the one I'm about to throw away. I'm not halfway through my digits yet. I'm not at five. And so it's not big enough to matter. This is about 31%. These types of percent problems are as challenging as they get. Okay, so I don't want anybody to feel overwhelmed with the level of challenge we did here. This is not what I would do with a beginning level student. This is what I would do with a student who is experienced with both word problems and percents and reading tables, just like the GED loves to combine skills. This has skills combined. So, you know, if this is your first time through the percents unit and you haven't been through interpreting word problems, I wouldn't expect you to be able to do this level yet. If this is your first time interpreting word problems and you haven't seen percents, yeah, no, don't bother to tackle it. And if you've never ever interpreted a table, well, now we just hit expert mode to put the skills together. So, you know, you gotta give yourself a break if you're a beginner. That is why the crash course is set up the way it is. So that if you're a beginner, you can go through at a simpler level, but as you get to that experience in advance, it starts putting more of the concepts together.
So last thing I want to say before I end this video is just a huge thank you to all my patrons and to everyone who supports me on Buy Me A Coffee. You guys are amazing. You guys are enabling GED students across the globe to accomplish their goals. I think last time I looked, Light and Salt Learning has been used in 127 countries. 127 countries. Think of the lives changed there. Think of how many people are achieving their goals and you helped. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to those who donate on cup of coffee. You guys are doing such important work. You're enabling me to do what I do. You are a blessing. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. Happy learning.